Let's talk about Hikari's left arm and a bunch of other questions straight from you guys about the manga. So for my anime onlys, you're going to want to skip this one. Alrighty y'all, so first up we've got this question from O5A on how did Hikari get his arm back? So if you'll recall, he lost it in the fight with Kashimo and wasn't in Jackpot anymore, so it didn't instantly regrow back, right? And as we've seen in the series thus far, when characters full-on lose limbs that aren't capable of performing RCT themselves, they can't really get those healed back on. So how did Hikari get his healed back on? And as far as I see it, there's basically a couple of possibilities here. The first is that even though Hikari is missing both of his hands, he could still do the domain expansion. And there is some precedent for this, um, both in Gojo only using one hand. Now, obviously, Gojo is him, but it at least presents the possibility that you could do a domain with one hand. Maybe it's weaker, you know, maybe it's less stable or less refined, but it is at least is in the realm of possibility, right? So maybe Hikari figured out a way to do his domain with one hand, eventually entered the jackpot, and regrew his arm. Another possibility is that perhaps Hikari cast his domain without even using the hand signs, and there is precedent for this as well. Back in the Shibuya incident, Dagon cast his domain without hand signs after Naobito, like, mashed up his fingers real bad to prevent him from doing the domain, and yet... He still did. So that might be an ability that's unique to Cursed Spirits. It's hard to say, but it's at least precedent that it's possible, right? So maybe Hikari found a way, or maybe there just is an established way that takes longer or is less optimal to cast your domain without the hand signs, and he did it that way, and then regrew his arm. And then a third option is, although somebody like Shoko hasn't been shown to be able to regrow someone else's limbs, she could probably reattach them. So maybe Hikari went and retrieved his arm, and then met up with Shoko or Akotsu, and they got him back on track, at least well enough to be able to perform the hand sign, and then he did the domain. So whatever the case may be, I think he ultimately cast his domain and healed himself, but it's just, you know, Pick your poison on how he got there. And then 058 actually had a second part of his question that just wanted me to talk a little bit about Druv, and he is one of the most fascinating characters in the Cullen game, in my opinion. We're told that he single-handedly conquered Japan way back when in the day during the Civil War, and also that this is his second incarnation, meaning the deal he made with Kenjaku to incarnate and participate in the Cullen games is the second time that he's incarnated. So we're not given much more information than that, but he presumably lived, died, incarnated, died, and incarnated again for the Culling Games. So, really fascinating character that I don't know if we'll get any more information about him, but I would love to. Next up, we got this question from Kadeem about binding vows and reverse curse technique. Feel free to pause and read the whole thing if you guys would like. But he's essentially asking, could you sacrifice your ability to perform RCT in a binding vow to, like, amp you in another way? And I think certainly, right? Miwa basically showed us that you can make a binding vow almost about anything, as long as it's logical and makes sense, right? She's giving all of her past and present and future into this sword strike, in addition for it being as strong as possible, but you'll never be able to wield a sword again, right? So theoretically, you could be like, I will never use reverse curse technique again to make this cursed energy output I have right now 300%, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, so I think that's certainly possible. However, I don't think you could wager that in a binding vow if you didn't even know reverse curse technique, which is part of what you ask here. So, you know, say somebody like, you know, Megami who doesn't have reverse curse technique, he couldn't say like, I'll never have reverse curse technique to make me stronger right now because he's betting with something he doesn't have, if that makes sense. So I don't think that would be possible. But I think it's super cool that you're running like a JJK D&D &D thing. In the Discord, we got a whole channel about TTRPGs, and a bunch of people are like making their custom JJK characters. So if that interests you or anybody out there, join the Discord. And speaking of Discord, I think this next donation comes from some Discord beef. Uh, A wants me to reiterate how Akotsu low diffs Kashimo. And just to be fair here, I do think Akotsu beats Kashimo. Like, current Akotsu in the manga right now, I think would edge out Kashimo um, in a 1v1. But it wouldn't be low diff. It would be high diff. Uh, but, yeah, thanks for the support, man. And then speaking of Miwa as well, we had this question from Munch Crunch, who basically wants to know what Miwa was up to during the Culling Games. And uh, Munch references a panel where, like, Miwa was kind of ominously, like, walking alone. And I remember when that chapter first came out, and for a while afterwards, a lot of people were speculating on, like, what did that mean? Like, what's going on with Miwa? You know, she's got the moniker Useless Miwa, so... You know, a lot of people were speculating that that would kind of be turned on its head and Miwa might have some impactful role to play. And maybe that panel 
was a clue, right? And I still think that Miwa could have an impactful role to play because I think that would be a nice little turn on its head, if you will. Um, but as far as what that panel meant and what she was doing during the Culling Games, uh, as we come to find out during uh, the planning for the Sukuna fight, uh, it is hard confirmed that Miwa did make a binding vow back during her battle with Kenjaku, so she is essentially useless because she can no longer wield a sword, which was like her only thing, right? So... I think she was just kind of laying low and doing her own thing in the culling games. I don't know if she was like actively hiding, but like she most assuredly wasn't getting into that many fights. And if she was, they must have been like super low diff opponents. So if there's still another shoe to drop with Miwa, um, it hasn't yet. And I'm excited for it. But, you know, anything beyond that would just be pure speculation. But uh, yeah, I for one am hoping that there is still something with Miwa. Next up, we got this question from Mateo about his theory that Megami is the one performing the chants for Sukuna's Dimensional Slash. And I apologize, I couldn't show the whole thing here because it's really long. It's a very thoughtful comment. Uh, for anybody that wants to read it, it's on my YouTube video for the Chapter 252 Leaks Predictions. Um, so, really well thought out comment. Your logic is on point. There's really nothing wrong with it, in my opinion, from that angle. It's just that I disagree. Um, so, Mateo thinks, again, that like, for example, the slash that killed Gojo, um, Megami performed the chance, and that's why that caught Gojo off guard. Um, so I agree with the outcome there that Gojo was caught off guard, but I just think Sukuna performed a binding vow to not have to do the chance, as opposed to Megami secretly doing them. Um, and for two main reasons. One, I don't think it makes sense characterization wise for Megami to already be like trying to kill his only friends the story might go there because you know Megami is in complete despair and dejection like he just might give it all up right and have a heel turn but even if that happens it doesn't make sense for me for that to have happened yet or at least for that to have happened to the extent that he wants to harm his only friends now you could be thinking that Sukuna is just like forcing Megami to do it somehow like he's puppeting Megami in order to perform the chance. Um, so if you think that, that would at least make more sense to me, but I still don't think that's the case because if so, Sukuna would just do that for every chant. And yet we've seen him actually perform the chant himself more than a few times so far. So I don't know why he would have Megami do it sometimes, but not all the time. So that's my two cents on it. But again, really well thought out comment. And I appreciate that. Next up, we got a bunch of questions about the 10 shadows from Draco. And Draco, I've actually covered a lot of these things in more in-depth videos. So I'm going to link those down below for you to check out. Like I have a whole video explaining the totality, which is the fusion that you're referring to. Uh, but there's actually two fusions with uh, 10 shadows, which is another reason it's so confusing. So I'm going to link all of those videos. Definitely check them out. But to answer a couple of your questions just very quickly here, um, Sukuna would have tamed the Shikigami that Megami didn't have off screen. So for example, you know, the Morning Tiger or Maharaga. And then if a totality fusion Shikigami dies, all but one of the Shikigami were already dead. So for example, in Ajito, all of the Shikigami that were infused in that, except Nue, were already dead. So when it died, really only Nue also died, if that makes sense. But now Nue and all the rest can be used in totalities with other Shikigami. And the rabbits are not immortal. There's just one rabbit that is actually the real rabbit, if you will. So if you kill that one, then uh, Rabbit Escape is dead as a Shikigami. But as long as that one survives, you can keep using it. Next up, we got this question from Marky asking, why did Kenjaku get foreign militaries to invade? So this was just part of his overall plan. He basically tricked the foreign militaries into thinking, you know, Cursed Energy could be an energy source for them and they needed to come check out Japan and scope this stuff out. But in reality, he was doing it to just use them as sacrifices to increase the amount of cursed energy in the colony to prepare for the merger. Because at some point during the Culling Games, a few of the colonies became like stabilized because they were taken over by the good guys, let's say. So people weren't fighting anymore. People weren't dying anymore. So Kenjaku sent in the military to basically force more deaths, force more cursed energy to prepare for the merger. And finally, we got these questions from Turtle, who wants to know, what is your name slash what should we call you? And what are your plans for after JJK ends? So first off, my name's Will. Thanks for asking. You can call me that or Monganimist or Manga, really whatever you want. It doesn't matter to me. And for what I'm going to do after JJK ends, 
I really just want to cover all sorts of anime and manga. I've started reading One Piece because I really want to cover that, but there's a lot of other ones I would just enjoy covering as well if the you know need or want is out there for it. Also, y'all, I keep running out of time in these videos, but thank you so much and see you in the next one.